Hi, thanks for watching Peter's Food Adventures. And today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. We are going to be exploring the similarities of the Soviet Union and my life currently here in Western Australia. Now, before you all get triggered, and I know you all do on every side, um, this is meant to be a joke. It's meant to be a bit of satire, but we're still exploring some similarities. Now, some of you might agree, some of you might not agree. I know you're gonna leave some comments down below, but let's get started on this. All right, so let's talk about border control. The Soviet Union had a massive land border with strict border controls. Officially, they were able to travel, but it wasn't encouraged by the authorities. In practice, it was virtually impossible. Travel was allowed within the Soviet bloc or to friendly countries. However, you still needed a difficult authorization process if this was to happen. In Western Australia, since COVID, we have had various states of border control, mostly with travel forbidden outside of WA. Because of the hard border, you weren't allowed to come back home, full stop. So you could leave, but never return, unless you had an exemption, which required government approval, and it's usually denied. So our borders were due to open soon. However, now they are shut indefinitely, with some calling us now the Hermit Kingdom. Okay, now let's move on to cult-like political figures. The Soviets were amazing at celebrating their cult-like Soviet heroes. And there were many, from Gagarin, the first human in space, to Lenin, who started it all. They loved them so much that they even embalmed him in Red Square, where he lies to this day. In Western Australia, our premier also enjoys cult-like status. They call him the state daddy because he keeps us safe. And at our last election, he had an approval rating at 88%. And of course, this inevitably leads to a one-party state. In our last election, we the people overwhelmingly voted his party into power, wiping out any form of opposition. Officially, the opposition party has two seats, which is the major opposition party, while the ruling party has 53 seats out of the 59. Basically, they can do whatever they like until the next election, where we get a chance again to change this outcome if we like. Okay, so let's talk about shopping and food supplies. Lineups and food shortages and rations are often associated with the Soviet Union. In the 30s and 40s, rations were introduced to maintain food stability. At various times, there were shortages for supplies like sausages, meats, and dairy, especially towards the end of the Soviet Union. Since the pandemic, we've also had to line up to get food in our grocery stores in Western Australia. Due to supply chain issues, sickness, absenteeism, COVID, there are shortages of meat, dairy, and household items in our supermarket. And there's kangaroo. Who wants a kangaroo burger? Apparently not a lot of people. Okay, there's ham. If anyone wants ham. This has been exacerbated by people hoarding items, which causes even more shortages. The supply chain does work and food arrives the next day, but I couldn't call our supermarkets fully stocked like they usually are. All right, and it wouldn't be a pandemic without any toilet paper issues. Now, I can imagine wherever you are in the world, uh, the pandemic hit and everyone ran for toilet paper. Uh, it is exactly the same thing here in Western Australia. Aside from people fighting in the supermarket for that last roll of toilet paper, the Soviets had a very clever way uh, to come up with a toilet paper shortage. Uh, when I arrived in the former Soviet state of Latvia in 92, uh, they were so gracious and kind to us, the people we were staying with, that they prepared some toilet paper for us in advance with their creativity of a newspaper. So if you are running out of toilet paper, cut them into little squares and you are good to go. Just don't flush these. Ah! All right, let's talk about socialized healthcare. Just like the Soviet Union, Western Australia has a great healthcare system. Um, no, I don't want to say any of that. Let me kill it. Here in Australia, we do have a healthcare system that is subsidized by the government, so it's free to go to the hospital. Uh, but there is also a two-tiered system, which makes us a little bit different um, than uh, the Soviet Union. All right, well, that was it. That's a comparison of uh, life in the Soviet Union and some of the similarities to life in Western Australia. Of course, it's not a real comparison. But look, hit like, subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.